What's up everybody and welcome to Conquest of Elysium 4, a strategy game developed by Illwinter Games. If you're not familiar with the Conquest of Elysium 4 franchise or the Conquest of Elysium franchise, you may be familiar with the game Dominions. So Illwinter being the same developer that made both games. I've covered Dominions on the channel before and I've had a ton of fun playing that game. So I'm excited to jump back into Conquest of Elysium 4 because I've played a lot of this as well and the games share a lot of similarities. It's the reason why I really enjoy uh, Illwinter's games and the way that they design everything. There's always a lot of complexity and depth to the games. So once again, if it's your first time seeing Conquest of Elysium 4, I promise to kind of show you the intricacies of the game. I'm not a professional, but I do know how to play it. And this will be a good chance for you guys to learn and maybe it ends up being something you're interested in. Now, the great thing about Conquest of Elysium 4 is it's a very easy game to learn how to play, but it's very hard to master. And I'm going to be playing this here, but I'm going to be doing something a little bit different because I didn't want to play just a standard old game like my previous Conquest of Elysium series that I've done on the channel. I want to do something a little bit different. So for map size here, what we're going to do is we're going to go with an enormous map. This is something I've never done in the past before. I've always played with smaller maps just to kind of speed the game up. But I was like, you know what? It'd be cool just to play in this massive world. Now for society, basically what society means is it, it uh, determines the um, kind of starting age of your world. So there's different ages here. You could pause if you'd like to read them. Um, the ages are just different states of the of the world that you've generated. I like to play in the Fallen Empire one. I feel like out of all of the societies here, the Fallen Empire one has a little bit of everything. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, advanced options here. I'm going to go with enable score graphs. Now, some people would say that's cheating to be able to see how other empires are doing, but I want to do enable score graphs because there's a couple of things I want to be able to tell from the score graphs as we're playing along with the game. And I promise it won't be used for cheating because it's not going to really help me out with the type of scenario I'm going with. But the score graphs are going to be useful just kind of for fun. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And probably you guys already know what I'm doing anyways because you've seen it in the title of the video. But we're going to be adding pretty much... Everybody we can get in here, it's going to be a full, full game. That's a lot of AI. Even on an enormous map, it's going to feel pretty crowded. But I'm going to go with unique random players, meaning that it'll be a different nation for each random. This should add a lot of variety to the game. There's actually some nations I've never even seen played before, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun. For my nation, though, I'm going to be playing with the tried and true Necromancer. I've played Necromancer on the channel before. I usually try to play something new whenever I do another series, but for this one, since I'm adding a couple of different variables to the game, like all the AI and stuff, I wanted to play a race that I somewhat understood and enjoyed playing. Now, there's going to be something else unique to this, and that's that we're going to be playing with a team of other Necromancers. So we're going to be like this gigantic, basically, undead faction trying to take over all these other factions in the world. But that's not all. Nobody else is going to be on a team, but everybody else is going to be on a higher difficulty. So I am going to try and up the difficulty of my Necromancer AIs here so that way they can kind of hold up. But we're going to kind of scale the difficulty here uh, down the list and across like so. So there's going to be some counts here. Then we're going to do this. Then we're going to have some Dukes. Okay. Um, like that. Actually going to be a Duke here. And like that. And then we're going to have two kings and we're going to have one emperor. So this is going to be the list, the difficulty breakdown. I think it's going to be really unique, you know, because it's going to be a lot of factions fighting each other. Obviously, the emperor is going to be the strongest one. It's going to be up to us to try to find out who that is. Hopefully, he doesn't take us out too early on in the beginning. And then just everybody else kind of fighting for dominance. Now, I like I said, I am going to be the only one on a team, but... Uh, you know, my, my teammates, they're only counts. We've got a couple other counts we could beat on before it starts being, you know, a lot harder. And it's certainly going to take three of us to take the Emperor on. So I think it's still a pretty fair match um, just in terms of gameplay and everything. And, and most importantly, I think it's just going to be interesting, even if it's not fair. I think it's just going to be interesting. So I'm not even worried about fairness. I'm just worried about having fun and trying something a little bit different. So we're going to jump right into it. Of course, we're going to give our Necromancer a name. 
Let's see, I usually always name characters after myself, but uh, let's try to go with something different. So what's a good, like, necromancer name? How about uh, um, necro... Necromanny. Oh my god. I'm a, a loser, and I'm terrible at making names. So here is our start here. Okay, this is very interesting. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a very unique start. Where am I in terms of... Okay, because the, the map is not, uh, it doesn't travel around. It is a box map, so you can um, you can kind of scroll around first. The very first thing I usually always do when I get into a Conquest of Elysium game is I kind of scroll around and find the edges of the map. I like that just to orientate myself with like where I am in the world. So I'm on the eastern border of the continent, and I'm about middle of the north and south. I'm a little bit closer to north. The south's way far. Interesting. I would have thought that I was down in the uh, southeast, considering I got water here and water here. So that means that there's actually more land down here, which means I'm probably in some sort of peninsula. That's kind of cool, actually. That That's handy. Oh, maybe easily defensible. Now, unfortunately, I will say I'm in the head of the peninsula. I would have much rather been red back here in the back <laughs> and just have my, my AIs, my allies here in front of me to kind of be my buffer. But... I guess uh, I'll do what I can to try to protect. So I've started out, we start out with a gallows and a farm. The big thing about necromancers, the most interesting thing is they actually use hands of glory to sort of do summonings and stuff like that. It's pretty important to your economy. And we can actually take a look and see what our main necromancer has here. So he's come with raise dead, minor summoning, and then raise legion. Wow, only possible in an old battlefield. Raise legion's really good. I don't even know if I've ever used that one before or even started with it. Minor summoning's pretty good. I usually like major summoning because you can get some pretty good stuff, but I'll take the raise dead, minor summoning, and the raise legion. So that's all really, really good. How about our apprentice here? Raise dead and twice born. Ah, uh, twice born. Uh, he will not die permanently, even if he should be killed due to some unforeseen circumstances. After he's been killed, he will rise as a wit or ghost, retaining all of his necromantic powers and insanity. Yeah, so that's going to be really good. And then raise dead as well. So we've got both of them here in our starting location. Now, in terms of the actual starting location, I already talked about the peninsula and kind of laid everything out for what we've got. But let me talk a little bit about just like for our new players, what you're looking at. Because I know it's, it could be kind of, I don't want to say daunting. There's not a lot here. It's not really daunting, but if you've never seen the game before, you might not be sure what you're really staring at. So obviously, we've got a couple buttons up here, unit overview, player overview, our score graphs. That's what I turned on um, so we can see how other empires are doing. Like I said, some people would consider this cheating. They usually would it, leave it off. I feel like just, you know, I want to be able to see it because I just want to, I want to observe it. I kind of want to see like, okay, how's, you know, the other difficulty players doing and stuff. Um, it is going to tell me all the people that are in the game because I can hover over this and see, but that's all right. We'll probably be able to tell who the emperor difficulty player is after about two turns because they'll be the ones that are just skyrocketing to the to the heavens. Whilst everybody else is kind of stagnant. Uh, so it's kind of cool because you can tell the difficulties of the different AI based off of just the score graph. A lot of the reason why I wanted it up uh, for necromancy. That's what we're playing here. Uh, we can see it's midsummer. We've got our gold, our iron production. We've got trade, and we've got the hands of glory, which is unique to our faction. Not every other faction is going to have this. Sometimes factions don't have anything but gold and iron. Some factions have other things, um, and just a couple of you know stuff here. Uh, this is ability uh, things for our unit that were clicked on. You can see. Uh, just clicking on the different units here. We've got two hero units and then just kind of like recruiting units out of your your uh, Citadel which we're sitting on currently and stuff like that a couple of different we got some undead here and stuff uh, We can get regular swordsmen and, and whatnot as well. They're kind of expensive gold wise, but you get you get the picture basically So this is where we're currently clicked. This is our Citadel We've actually got a hamlet right here and a farm right below us in neither of these neither of these are taken over so the stuff that we own is highlighted by the green boxes our allies obviously highlighted by their respective colors and we've started with a couple of things nearby which is worth you know you could take over these towns and these hamlets and you get resources for it indicated at the bottom like the hamlet will get uh, two gold a turn additional the farm will get one so it's all stuff you eventually want to to move and take over and i think starting with some of these old battlefields around us and starting with a farm in the hamlet right next to us let alone a farm in a hamlet with nobody guarding is pretty good now there is a city here and cities are really really good especially in the fallen empires uh age because they're rare 
and they produce as you can see a lot of income a lot of trade and, and cities are the only way you can you can generally get trade cities ports stuff like that you, you see the hamlet and the, the farm don't generate any trade and neither does the your starting citadel so this is really good it also develops um a couple of other things as well so the city's like real nice but it, it's gonna take a lot cities are usually very well defended in fact we can actually click and see they got a catapult They've got a high lord and a couple of stuff. Actually, not too defended, but you got to break down these wooden gates here to get inside to fight these guys. And the, meanwhile, the catapults just, you know, dropping rounds over you. So it's not always great. So actually, we're going to go ahead and we're going to transfer units over to our, our necromancer. Meanwhile, the, the apprentice, the apprentice, we might just leave him hanging out for now. Um, maybe we'll have him raised dead and we can repeat that ritual um i think you have to be someplace where there's been a battle there's actually an old battlefield here so we could send our apprentice over there and he could just raise dead over and over again well as the, our uh, main necromancer is going around and capturing stuff so let's transfer a couple units over to our main necromancer so to do that we, we've got him selected here and we're just going to select the units that we want him to take with him when he leaves if we wanted to give them to our apprentice we would just click our apprentice and he would uh our apprentice would follow him if we wanted to give units to our apprentice instead of our necromancer we could simply click on our, the apprentice go to transfer units and now we can we could give him the necromancer or whatever you just kind of see it's very very basic there's not a whole lot here so we'll give him about half of the army and maybe three uh, let's leave three and one i don't propose we're going to get attacked super early but i have seen independents take out citadels before independents being the wolves crocodiles and all the various other um non-faction related units that are currently on the map but i think we're going to be okay i'm going to go right for the hamlet actually and then uh, i'm going to take the old battlefield so i get my apprentice over there and he can start raising dead um as for anything else i actually could um, so because it's a battlefield, I could raise Legion, but we obviously don't have the hands there. I don't have enough action points to be able to raise dead and I can't do minor summoning. So I can't do anything else with that unit and I can't do anything with my apprentice. So he'll just hang out there. We'll end the turn. So here's our battle with the soulless. We're going to move in. Archers are going to fire their rounds. So battles just kind of happen. You just kind of watch them. You're not really, you don't get to you know, do anything with your units or anything or cast any abilities. It all kind of happens. Um, like my necromancer is currently casting his own abilities and stuff. Um, there you go. He's raising a couple dead for us. And uh, we just watch. So we might lose a few spearmen here and there, but. Nice. Him raising a couple dead definitely helps us. Wow, he's raising a lot of dead. That's going to be great when we start fighting some other areas. Oh, we found a magic item. The Ring of Infinite Gold and a Gem of Fire Resistance. Wow. Uh, maybe because it's an old battlefield. I've never gotten that kind of luck before. That's great. I can take a look at these items right now. And our guy here, he should have equipped them. So the Ring of Infinite Gold. Gold bonus of five a month. Wow. What a great early game find. This is already shaping up to be one of my best games. And fire resistance 100, which is always wonderful. But that that gold, that bonus gold is crazy. It's a crazy good ability. All right, so blue's heading out. Actually, took uh, both of his. He pretty much took everybody with him. He only left oh four. Oh, he built a couple because he's a little bit higher difficulty. He started with some extra gold. Okay, okay, no big deal. So we're gonna. I know I want to definitely head down, um, and take this before red does so let me go ahead and secure that as for the apprentice i can't really give him anything and i can't recruit any units for him to take with him so i'm, I'm taking a big risk here but i'm gonna have him uh raise dead holy crap there was a lot of dead there and that is the wonderful thing about old battlefields is you sometimes get really lucky so he actually got all those attached to him uh, which is crazy now undead units are fairly weak so you kind of look like wow that's really good but you can see their hit points you know three hit points three hit points four hit points they're they're not very powerful um but they're great fodder all right so i'm gonna end my turn so i might send my necromancer back actually to do the raised dead i don't know i haven't figured it out or i could just have him swap units here 
There's another old battlefield up there. Ooh, we got an ancient temple guarded by some minotaur. And that, uh, what's that do? What's it produce? I don't even know. I've never, there must be good items there or something. I've never messed with the ancient temple. Um, we got a swamp here with some crocodiles. We're going to want to take those out. We got another battlefield. Why don't I take this guy now with his new army and start sending him over? And then we'll actually do raise dead here so we can get a couple units. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of dead left here, but that's all right. We got a few more. All right. Um, all right, let's end our turn. Let's take a look real quick at the graph. Okay, so... Okay, so blue's up there a lot, which I don't know why, but he is. I guess because he took the coastal hamlet. Blue is up there, so at least our ally's up there. Um, this is for military, by the way. And then we've got... Gold, it looks like the Druid. Is that gold? There's like two very similar colors. That actually looks like it might be the Barbarian. So I think that's the Emperor because of how he's starting out. But his economy's not way up there. Purples is. But that don't always mean anything. We'll have to wait a couple turns and see. But uh, that's, that's definitely the Druid. Yeah, we'll have to wait a couple turns and see where that goes. Look at my, look at my military strength. Shoot right up though. That's excellent. Excellent. I want to try to stay competitive this game, which is why I actually want the chart because I want to be able to watch and see how competitive I actually am. A goblin chieftain will let that pass. Barbarian war camp. Another hamlet. So I'd love to take this city. I wonder if I could throw my undead at it and take it. There's more battlefields, old battlefields here. I should probably head to those. Um, as soon as I can. Oh, dang it. So every now and again, a necromancer has a chance of going insane. Um, uh, so unfortunately that's just a, that's just what happens. So he's, he's gone insane. We can't, we can't, uh, we can't use him this turn. So let's at least go and start taking out some of these independents. So that way they don't. You know, they don't take my citadel out or some crazy thing like that. And I guess we're using the apprentice to do it. I might eventually upgrade the apprentice. You can upgrade them. I think I need field. Uh, I think I need the hands to do that. Uh, ritual of mastery, lesser ritual of mastery. The ritual of mastery, I think, is what actually will upgrade him. Do I have enough? When can I start? Uh, let's see. Minor summoning. So I can start doing minor summoning like right now. Um, let's give it a shot and see what we get. Well, let's actually start moving down a little bit to capture more stuff. Um, I'd love to get the, oh man, that guy got a great defensible position. Um, I'd love to get something. Maybe I should head up this way. I could take the barbarian camp out. Let me see what's up here. Okay. So that's pretty much it. All right. Let's take the crocodiles out with this army. Crocodiles are pretty beefy. Used fear on one of them. Used fear on both of them. That's great. That fear is really, really good. Was it panicked? Oh, he's insane too. Well, where is he getting that? So he's got the fear. Yeah, that works really good. So we can simply just win just by using fear. Oh boy. Is that... That's not the barbarians though. That's yellow. That's not gold. So don't think that's the emperor, but we can take a look at the chart again just to make sure. I don't think that that is let's see there's only one way to do this oh it is the barbarian okay and then there's a druid so who's that down there though that's not the barbarians is it oh where'd they go okay so i can't see them now you must have took something out there's a watchtower there though that's always good all right the snow is going to make it a little bit harder for us to travel uh, so i can't move into any of that Ah, uh, Necromancer took my farm. One of my allies on accident. That happens sometimes. He can't even move. And he's not insane. He just can't move. I must have technically used him in that turn. I'm not sure. 
Okay, we can hire a captain. I'm going to skip over it. I'm waiting for more necromancers to be able to hire. I want to move on that. Old battlefield so I can keep my... I can get my uh, undead armies up a lot higher. You don't get to keep the skeletons you summon during battle, by the way. Wow, a pendant of the gods. Okay. Ooh, there's actually a wraith here. I never would have guessed. All right. That could be a little challenging. They're ethereal and stuff. They're, they are hard to take out, but I think we'll be able to overwhelm them with sheer numbers. Yeah. Yeah, archers made short work of them. That's excellent. Uh, magic flowers. Okay. So we'll take a look at both of those items. So I want to see what we got with the magic flowers. Summons one Venus trap at start of battle. Very good. I'll take it. I'll take it. And then he grabbed another item, but he couldn't wield it. Um. So what did he do with it? Trying to remember where items go. I don't even remember what the item was. It would have been, it probably was a random unit that got it. Um, Right there, he's got it. The Pendant of the Gods, all plus one shock resistance flying. Holy crap. Um, Yeah, so for that random unit to have that really doesn't make any sense. The, the Ring of Infinite Gold should go to somebody else. And that my necromancer should have that pendant of the gods. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of moving around to kind of get that. Um, let's see. So we'll try to raise dead here. Get a few more people for my army. Nice. A lot of soulless. Super squishy soulless. And same here, actually. We can't raise legion, so we'll raise dead. Not nearly as much. My other army is definitely a lot larger. All right. I definitely want to take the city on. There's more old battlefields. The port also, which isn't too bad. I should be able to take that port. So why don't we start heading that way next turn? Okay, blue's all over the place military-wise. I'm still shooting up. I'm trying to stay ahead of the rest of them. But it's all with skeletons, so it doesn't mean a whole lot just yet. I don't remember if military might's actually calculated by power or calculated by, um, like, numbers. But we're at the start of a new turn here. And I think now's a good time to leave us as we're out of time. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. If it's your first time seeing Conquest of Elysium 4, is it something that might interest you? Is it a game that you might play yourself? And if you're familiar with the game, don't forget to always leave tips, tricks, anything like that. I'm always receptive to feedback. Leave a like as well. If you want to see more Conquest of Elysium, I think it's going to be really fun. You know, just definitely unique. It's going to be uh, harder than you might think, even with my two... AI allies, we're going to be a, uh, you know, hard matchup against that emperor, but we'll see. We'll see. I want to thank you all for joining me. Hope that you've enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you next time.